What you're looking at here is actually a aspirating syringe. Now you'll see there's a harpoon on here, which <clears throat> we haven't really seen yet in our other videos. So I don't typically use this style of syringe in practice. Um, I usually use these self-aspirating syringes, which have the little nub in near the end, uh, which aspirate when you let go of the pressure on the plunger. This syringe operates a little bit differently. So as you can see, there's this very sharp harpoon, and what it does is it actually buries itself into this little rubber stopper, and you'll wonder, oh, why is this little X here on the stopper? That's basically like X marks the spot. That's where the plunger or the uh, harpoon sinks into. And it engages fairly solidly, but in order to do that, you typically have to give it quite a whack. So when we put this in, um, you almost have to give it a bit of a, a whack on the end. So you have to smack it, which kind of then embeds the harpoon into the uh, rubber stopper. The harpoon that sinks into here over time can become dull. Uh, so if it does, one thing that you can do is you can sharpen it. Um, and the other thing you could do is you could clean it if it's having trouble engaging that rubber stopper. So sometimes it just needs a good wipe, a bit of a clean up to make it function properly again. Alternatively, you could just invest in some different syringes. So it might be time, if you've done that many injections, just to go with a new one. They're not that expensive. So what you do with these guys is they're a little bit different. So this one has, again, it's got the thumb ring at the top, um, which is going to allow me to pull back. Now, the other self-aspirating syringe that we'd see in the other video, when you pull back, it kind of just like you feel this um, plunger or the piston kind of slipping a little bit, so it pulls back from the carpule. Whereas in this one, the harpoon is actually basically embedded into the rubber. So that basically stops you from being able to pull back. So when you pull back, you'll actually be seeing that the rubber stopper is pulling up with your thumb ring going backwards. So I'll demonstrate this here. I will inject, squirt some anesthetic out. I'm injecting fairly quickly. So my patient doesn't seem to mind. <laughs> so we're gonna stop here for a sec. So now I've injected a little bit. Now in real life, you know, you're not gonna do that much. Typically you're gonna inject a tiny bit and then you're going to pull back, see if you're in a vessel, make sure that you're good to go. So you might do like, you know, a fifth of a carp or something like that um, before you, you know, pull back on this. Some will try to do it right away, um, which again is fine. And typically with aspirating, again, two planes, right? So you pull back, rotate, pull back again, no blood, then you proceed with your injection. So now what we've done, and I'll try to kind of zoom in on this a little bit, we've injected, uh, we'll focus in here. Good. So now if you watch this little stopper as I pull back here, you're going to see it moving, right? And I can come back quite a bit. You're seeing air bubbles here coming in. Now, I've pulled back quite a bit there. You really only need to pull back one to two millimeters. I'm just demonstrating here so you can kind of get the gist of how it works. But one to two millimeters is fine. One thing you do have to be careful of is say that you're in the tissues over here and you're pulling back on the plunger make sure that you're not kind of pulling out on the syringe at the same time, right? So that is one little trick with these things. Sometimes you will start to pull away from where you're going, which actually moves the needle out of the position that you want it to be in. So just, again, be cognizant that you're still in the proper location um, after you've aspirated. So really, that's the only difference with these guys. Um, when you go to unload this, so I'll show you how that works too. You just basically pull this all the way back here when you're done. Again, the harpoon typically will pop loose from the uh, rubber stopper. Sometimes it doesn't though. So sometimes you, know, you kick out your carpule and there's a rubber stopper that's still kind of stuck to this thing. It makes a neat little popping noise, but it's other than that kind of annoying because then you have to kind of like pry it off there and take it off. So um, for the most part, you know, some practitioners will like these. Most are probably gonna be using these self-aspirating syringes. Um, it really doesn't matter. Are you going to get more positive aspirations with these? Yes. No, you certainly will, which is interesting. Um, and they've done research to show this. Now, one thing about aspirations is that I didn't know about is when you get bright red blood, obviously, um, you're in an artery. And if you get darker red blood, uh, you're typically in a vein or a, um, a venule, right? So, 
again, that should almost be common sense, but I never really paid attention to the blood. Like it was kind of like, you know, I'd see it come in the car pill and I thought, oh, okay, I'm in a vessel, but I wasn't really thinking what type of vessel, right? So just interest sake. Also, if the blood really shoots into there, again, probably right, high pressure, likely in an artery. If it's just oozing in there a little bit, again, likely not uh, an artery or probably in a vein. So good to know, um, just as far as we're going in, I guess one application of that, so you're saying like, okay, that's interesting, but who cares? Uh, if you go ahead and you inject, say, a um, inferior alveolar nerve block, for example, or you're trying to do a Galgate's block and you're kind of high up, you're really posterior, there is a possibility that you're going to have some of your anesthetic getting in near the maxillary artery, which then travels in um, up the face and you'll get like a blanching of the side of the nose and, and the kind of infraorbital area. And patients oftentimes will actually get some numbness or uh, paralysis of their lateral rectus muscle in their eye. So they kind of get like double vision, um, which can be very concerning for the patient. Also very concerning for you if you ever see this and don't know what it is. But I'll mention it now because it has happened to me. And uh, at the time I didn't know what was going on, but I had to figure that out and now I know. So again, say you were to aspirate partway through that injection and you see there's fast flowing bright red blood, you might go, okay, the artery, and then, you know, you kind of reposition, finish your injection, but the damage is kind of already done, right? You've already put in uh, quite a bit of solution, and now you're going to see that effect I was just talking about. That might give you some confirmation that, yeah, indeed, you were close to that maxillary artery, and that is exactly what's happening in that case. So I've just explained the artery thing, <laughs> and some of you are sitting there, some of you really astute people. You're thinking, okay, now you mentioned that these are actually more effective at aspirating, so you get more positive aspirations. I wonder why that would be. Well, the reason that they've, I guess, expressed in these papers is that you're going to have more negative pressure with these because obviously you're pulling back significantly further than you would be um, getting for rebound when you have just a self aspirating syringe with the little nub at the tip here. So as you're applying more negative pressure, you're actually going to see more blood flow back into there from small ruptured vessels in the area versus actually maybe being within a vessel. So are they um, false positives? Potentially, yes. So just be aware of that. But uh, yeah, overall, you're going to see more blood in the carpules with these. Don't think it's something that you're doing wrong. It's just simply the nature of how they work.